In Hebrews chapter 12, verse 7 and 8, it speaks about chastisement. And if you're not chastised toward the Word of God, if you have trouble in your life, it's not corrected. Uh, you're not son, but bastard. Today, I want to look uh, in this uh, portion of Scripture here and preach to you a little message. I call the title of the message Baptist Bastard. And mostly Baptist Bastards in general. Uh, you know, preachers on national news these days, I, I've not heard first preacher, not where they get on or whatever uh, on television, but I'm just telling you, I've not heard the first preacher. I've not heard the first cry on national news about the cry of the abominable, filthy, ungodly, sins of sodomy, shame and disgrace. Where is the cry in the land? What's going on in our country today? Uh, the news media portraying the filthy sodomites down here in uh, Florida. I mean, get by with it. Where's the cry from the preachers? Abortion. Our First Amendment, Second Amendment, Tenth Amendment. I can go right on. Fourteenth Amendment. I can go right on and on and on. And our flag, our prayer, under attack. Politician, no doubt. They're glad they've legalized sodomy. They're glad they've legalized abortion. Very little cry. It's like Carly Florena said. It's the law of the land. Let's obey it. Well, I'm not going to obey it. I'm going to obey God's word over the law of the land. I think America turned in another Sodom and Gomorrah. Oh, sinful nation, a people laden with iniquities, seed of evildoers, children that are corruptors, they have forsaken the right way. They've gone away backwards. Just like it reminds me in Jeremiah 48. Uh, Moab is settled on his leaves. That's a church. Today, they settled on their leaves. They not been emptied vessel to vessel. Her stink still remaineth thin. them. Uh... I was looking up some things on the internet this week, and the report I got, I don't know how true it is, but they said eight to 10,000 churches closed yearly here in the, these last days. And the Bible said they'd come a fallen way first. And many shall come to you dressed as in sheep clothing, but in their, their raven wolves. Southern Baptist, just this past week, uh, ordered the rubber flag. I said it was offensive and asked their members not to fly it no more. It's my heritage, amen. I'm son of a Confederate soldier. And it's history, amen. I just like it now. You hear on the news, uh, this Muslim, if you're president, uh, won't let the army and military uh, say certain words, jihad, sharia law, or uh, radical Islam terrorists. That's what we're getting into, political correctness. Could it be the beginning of the end of Christian fundamental? You think about it just a little bit. Maybe the end. We, I think we're right on the end time anyway. I think it's just about over in America. Uh, Southern Baptists. Some Southern Baptists, not all of them. I, I, they're good people in all the churches, no doubt. But I'm just talking about Southern Baptists now allow gays and transgender ordination. And same-sex marriage in their churches. Joe, how much more bumble and filthy man which drank liquid like drinking water? That conceived mist can bring forth bandit in their belly. Very power deceit. Uh, Jeremiah talks about when they commit abomination, they don't even blush. There's no blush. There's no blush in people's face now. They can live in, shack up, everything else, smoke dope, and there's no shamefacedness. And we're living in a day and time, no doubt. One they'll call evil good and good evil. That's where we're at today. Place dark as light. And so many Baptists today. Believe you can be saved. Lie. Steal. Curse. Like a seller. Be a child. Pedophile predator. Commit adultery. Fornication. Shack up. Smoke dope. Get drunk. Be a pervert. Have three, four wives. And still be a Baptist preacher in these last days of that. 
etc. I just want saved, always saved. Well, I, that's probably one of the worst doctrines in the Bible. But it, it's real. But I'm just telling you, we've been picking them green, amen. And I speak this to your shame. I, this is what happened. They profess they know God, in works they deny Him. Being a bundle, this be unto every good work. Reprobate! Going to hell. You think about it. I, this Bible, Bible tells me, they that preach the gospel should also live the gospel. We're supposed to be the light of the world. We're supposed to be the salt of the world. We're supposed to be ambassadors of the world. We're supposed to be example to the believer in words, in faith, in purity. Boy, you see how some of our folks dress these days. I, I suggest you visit a funeral parlor and see for yourself. 99% of the ones I go to, the deceased, will be preached in the glory land. Baptist bastards. Somebody's picking the brain. Like uh, all the big rain years ago, I remember the words he said, uh, uh, just like a half-baked cake, just half-turned, amen. That's where we're at today, amen, half-turned. Well, things were, they'll make merchandise out of you. Jude tells us they snuck in on the word. Who are, oh, Lord, who are they? They're false prophets. They're money munchers. <laughs> I mean, it's no great thing if it's be Mr. Righteous, whose end shall be according to their deeds. And it's no great thing for the devil himself transform into the angel of light. Looks like the man of God. But this is what the Bible said, in vain they worship me, teaching the doctrine to, doctrine to man. I'm Baptist like Billy Graham, Rick Warren, and Jack Van Hippie. I mean, who holds a hand with a potentate Francis? What a name. What a name for a man. And now I'm fixing to expose some uh, big time so-called Baptist bastards in their churches. And tell you the reason why they're that way. Uh, but they that will be rich. Fall in temptation and a snare. And many foolish and hurtful lusts. Which grounds men in destruction and in perdition. Money, money, money. And more money. That's what they preach for. Filthy lure, amen. And you know what the Bible says? I mean, uh, this right here. They fall in temptation and a snare. And many foolish and hurtful lusts. And drowned in destruction and perdition. That means they'll go to hell, amen. Philippians 3, 17, 19. This is a good verse. Uh, I've liked this uh, verse ever, ever since I learned uh, where it was at, amen. I hid it in my heart. I brought them be uh, followers together of me and mark them which walk uh, so as you have us for examples. For many walk as whom I have told you often. Now I tell you, even with weeping, they are the envies of the cross of Christ. Who's in destruction? Whose gods are belly? Whose glories are shame? Who minds an earthly thing? They profess they know God. In works they deny them. Being abominable and filthy unto every good works, reprobates. Whose mouth must be stopped? Whose uh, birth, old houses? Teaching things which are not for filthy lures. Money, money, money. I Bible it talks about in Luke chapter 18, verse 25. It's easier for a camel to go through a needle die than a rich man to enter in the kingdom of God. You get that? I think about Ezra. Ezra, that old prophet, a long time ago. Oh my God! I'm blushed. I mean, I can't even lift up my face to thee, O oh God. For our iniquities have went over our head. Boy, you think about that. What words that prophet spoke. Just like the day. That's what we're experiencing in our churches today. They made lies of refuge under falsehood to hid themselves. Like the adulterous woman. She loved her mouth. Loved her mouth. I ain't done nothing wrong. There ain't nothing wrong shacking up. There ain't nothing wrong smoking a little dope every now and then. There ain't nothing wrong with nothing. There ain't nothing wrong with me living in my lover. And the truth is falling in the street. I just like this week. I, I received the... Uh, an email from uh, Kid uh, Anderson, uh, youth song, which youth leader, whatever you want to call him, at the uh, Emmaus Baptist Church. Uh, I, he told me to get a life. <laughs> Brother Matt, I got a good life. I'm exposing your pastor. Hey, man. And James Druckman wrote an article to me here a while back on email. Said if I didn't like the Baptist, get out. James? I've been a Baptist for 37 years. I like the name Baptist. And I'm not moving out nowhere. 
If, in, if anything I'm doing you don't like, won't you move out? I've, I've been a Baptist a lot longer than you've been around, son. Uh, Pastor Ricky Rowley and none of his church folks got name calling and, and calling somebody out because they don't want to get in that because they're too busy and they could care less. That's what he wrote on the Facebook some time back. And I'll use this stuff when you put it up, our brother. All right, if you ain't afraid to write it, I ain't afraid to talk about it. And they got more important things to do, talk on diverse things. Hey, man, while the world's going to hell, we'd rather hoot and holler, shout, and have a big hooray, amen. That's what's wrong now. We just want to preach on love, 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 and more love, and preach on love, and, and this stuff, and while the church is going to hell, amen. Love and believe, brother. I just like that's the old saying, Amen. That's all we want to preach on late uh, age last days. I just like uh, right here now that we love this man. I mean the Baptists. Uh, I mean from the fundamental group on down, Amen. They love the the late cult leader Jack Howells. He went to, on to he went to his own home, no doubt. Howells Anderson boasted that he failed fundamentalism with. Fall with them. God's still on his throne, Jack, and you're in hell. He claimed that God has given them the stirring wheel of fundamentalism. Hall said on more than one occasion, if I told my staff to jump off uh, the bridge and commit suicide, they would do it. He said this, for example, in the sermon of March 5th, 1989. Prayers to the dead. Every preacher who has praised First Baptist instead of speaking out against the sins of uh, is their partakers are all. Doctor David Cloud. I mean, said this. He had no spiritual respect for people that supported Hiles Anderson, and he didn't call her name, but I'll call some of her name: David Gill, Johnny Pope, Larry Brown, uh, more, uh, more up. Town name, Clarence Sexton, Pale Crossroad. Uh, so I'm just I'm telling you what he said, and I'll say amen to that, Baptist bastard. I, uh, listen to this. I mean, that's what I'm talking about uh, in the Republican Democrat Party. They can lie like dogs to you, and we're still going to support that crowd. Amen, 100%. Uh, just like uh, at Jack's funeral in 2001, so much Jack. Crony said words like this, the boss died, our boss is watching you, our counselor, our world, our everything. He was Moses, Jeremiah, John the Baptist, or John R. Rice, Lee Robertson, Bob Jones, let's roll off, Billy Sunday, all rolling one, or as a guy next door, well. And Jack said the church rests upon these two shoulders, the church. Oh, what a man Jack was. And he did have thousands and thousands of pastors as cronies, and they're still preaching his gospel, amen, to a lost and dying world. They asked them what they believe about the goodness of God, lead your repentance and see what you get. You won't get it, friend. I'm, I'm talking about, he said the world needs me. If I fail, fundamentalism, churches are gone. I, last count I had this morning, this afternoon, when I talk to God, he's still on his throne, amen. By the way, Jack had a professor who said, I bowed my head <laughs> and prayed, Dear Brother Howells, now you think you think about something, something missing up. His elevator don't go all the way to the top, amen. That is Jack Howells. Denied that he was a moral reprobate as well as a dictator of cult, cult leader, and Dr. Tony Hudson declared that Jack Howell's name was not a curse word while preaching at Faith Baptist Camp in Red Cycle, Georgia in 2015. I several uh, people support Jack Howell's 100%. Uh, it's a shame what we're seeing as a disgrace. The late Jack Howell and his fire with the Secretary Jenny Nixick. Now, you can believe this if you want to. It don't matter. It's pretty well documented, uh, everything I've ever read about him, and testimonies I've uh, read about him. Jack Howell was a womanizer for over 40 years. 
since 1971 or even before that might be in the early uh, early late 60s rather Howells without his wife took Jenny three other women to Hawaii stayed on the same uh, beachfront in a hotel uh, being the only male in the group and by the way Jenny and her husband Vic their marriage was on the rock they didn't process of getting divorced at that time move on Jack's son-in-law Jack Shaw, who declares there's 22,000 words in the King James Bible, wasn't supposed to be there. I had 22,000 mistakes in the King James Bible. Who had a affair with an underage church goer? The nuts don't fall far from the tree. In the book of Revelation, this is what he says. I know that works. Uh, I know, and the tribulation and property. But thou art rich, and I know the blasphemy of them, which they say they're Jews and are not, but are the synagogues of Satan. Child, a child predator, a child pedophile, predator. I have a message on YouTube, praying from the pulpit, not praying, but P-R-E-Y-I-N-G, a mini series. You ought to listen to it, Jack Isles, Misfit Outfit. Uh, just like I said, when they commit abomination, they don't even blush. Other Howells Anderson graduate, I'm going to name a few, I'll get them all, there's more than I can name, but listen to the message on the uh, YouTube, praying from the pulpit, Calvin Stone. Went to jail after he confessed molesting a little uh, girl. Same happened to Russell Overland. Uh, Kerry Martin, Chester Mullican, and former pastor Joe Cohn. By the way, good old Joe child predator and his wife. He's in prison for a hundred years, thank God. And Timothy Lee Leonard, who raped his little adopted daughter, uh, deacon at the First Baptist Church, A.V. Bowser, who was found guilty of one count of child molestation. I dated him back to 1991. Bowser was sentenced to five years in prison. All Howells College boys, and we got these a uh, big name uh, preacher that preached at uh, camp meeting all the time at Recycle, Georgia. It's for uh, Howells Anderson College 100% today, amen. I call them wolves in sheep clothing. I call them Baptist bastards, and if they're not, they need to repent and get right. I, I think they're on the road to hell, most of them, amen. The uh, Bible says, for without our dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and whoremongers and all liars. I, you're going to split hell wide open. Can a man take part in his bosom and his clothes and not be burned? Who's ever committed adultery with a woman like a thunderstanding? And he that doeth destroy his own soul. That's what Jack Hall done. But I can hear you, someone say, I'm a Baptist. So what? I asked you, is God chastising you? I, we find in 1 Corinthians about chastising the God. Apostle Paul, they was fornication in the church just like so many Baptist churches right now. It makes me want to pure gay man. You say, you don't know what you're talking about. I, I think I do. I, I, uh, fornication going on in 1 Corinthians chapter 5. And Apostle Paul, I mean, listen, he told him what he's going to do. Deliver such one uh, over to Satan for destruction of the flesh that the Spirit may be saved. Are you getting them chastised from God? Are you living in adultery and, and preaching another gospel and believing another way and partaking at the table of the devil? Listen, David, this uh, preacher, Nathan, thank God, they some they still some preachers around today look you in the eyeball, amen. And Nathan come to David one day and said, you're the man, David. And because I give great occasion to the end of the Lord bless him, the child is born unto you shall surely die. He chastised David. And after David got chastised in 1 Kings chapter 15 verse 5, he never did wobble on the axle no more. Amen. Sometimes God uh, killed his son to bring his sins to remember. Bible said, be sure your sins to find you out. Uh, a few years back, pastor over Cal Calvary Baptist Church, I attended there several years ago and liked the man. And he got caught up in adultery. And his protege, right after him. He got caught up in adultery. Both of these men went to Georgia, took their sugar moms with it, and still preaching and pastoring in Georgia, like the last count I had of them. Now you think about it. There's something missing. 
God can't put a bless, blessing up on stuff like that. I just like a man right here side of where I live. Uh, Arbuckle's his name. He took another uh, church member to Georgia and stayed in the trailer for uh, over a week. And they so enticed with the Word of God. I mean, they rams that Bible every single day. Studying that Bible together. Shacked up together in the trailer. But they loved the Lord. And they didn't do nothing wrong. But like Scott and I had... I don't know where he's at. I mean, out of church. Uh, so I'm just, I'm just talking about these people going to Georgia. I, I, I had a friend preaching on the street, Nathan Newton, and uh, his wife left him. And uh, he took this little gal, another church goer, uh, down to Jinkle Islands, got her drunk, and brought her back, then married her, then got a divorce. And he's still preaching. There's something wrong. I'm telling you, something wrong with their doctrine, amen. And here, we're going down, move down to Alabama just a little bit. Uh, Ronnie Sutton, a uh, convicted child predator, pedophile, and Dr. Sammy Allen, Faith Baptist Camp, posted Ronnie's mug on a poster board to preach at the camp meeting in 2011. Ronnie Sutton admitted he was guilty of sin. And at a fire with a little uh, little black 13-year-old girl tried to uh, get, it, get her in his car, he got called in front of their house. He admitted under oath he was going to bodily hurt her. And I'm telling you, Dr. Sammy Allen postered his mug to preach. In 2011, there ain't no child predator ever going to preach to me. He should have got out of the ministry and hear Dr. Allen's partaking at uh, Ronnie Sutton's table. Amen. And I speak this to you, shame. Amen. It's like I said about David Cloud. He had no special respect for anybody at partake at Howell's Tabor table. Uh, John Flector, black preacher in Chattanooga. Boy, what a preacher. He pre I preached for him uh, a few years ago. And he believed he had a television, he was held down. He believed if a lady didn't wear the rest down their ankles, held down. He believed if you smoke, he's held down. And the old boy got caught up with a sugar mama. Still pastor. I, I told a preacher about that some time back, uh, two or three years ago. And I asked him, he's still preaching the revival meeting. And uh, he said, yeah, I just preached for him this week or so ago. And I said, well, I know some stuff on if you want to hear it. And I, he didn't want to hear it. That's where we're at today. I mean, unqualified preacher. Just like I said, I preach this to your shame. Uh, so I'm just telling you where we're at today. Uh, when, you, when you do all this stuff and take other women and, uh, uh, and do the things that you do with them. And, and both of you love the Lord. So you say, I call them uh, Baptist bastards. Amen. I, I, know a, I know a good friend I work with on abortion run all over the country for uh, several years. And when he got married, got married, when he got saved, he got married too. When he got saved, he was shacking up. After he got saved, he was still shacking up. And a few months later, he was still shacking up teaching Sunday school. And like Scott and I had him, uh, he had uh, seven, had seven women. You, you, I mean, he, he, and they divorced now. And I know another, uh, I'm not going to call his name because it's so close to hell. Uh, he, 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 he might shoot me or something. But I'm, just, I'm talking about uh, take women, so-called women, out of the church and they do the wild thing and takes women to Smoky Mountain more occasion than one, takes them down to Florida and stays a week with them in the motel without a chaperone and they say they love the Lord. This is what I'm calling Baptist bastards, amen. Uh, just like now you can uh, you can be married three or four times and still be a you still be in good shape with the average Baptist. Uh, I mean, in the day we live, man. Right here, one door to blow your mind.
Uh, this uh, Hiles Anderson's son, David, uh, he pastored uh, his father's church out in Texas, Miller Road Baptist Church. And, I mean, it was a whorehouse. It had to be a whorehouse. And he had sex, and it was on uh, uh, pictures, amen, in the very act, uh, and with 17 different women. And you got these so so-called great men of God like David Gibbs and Johnny Polk and Larry Brown and Clarence Sexton. I mean, I can, call, I can call all kinds of names. It still sports that misfit outfit. I call them spiritual Baptist unqualified preachers, amen. Uh, you can say what you will. The most controversial line preacher, Phil Kidd, and his son, especially his son, I mean, he's so messed up, it, it ain't even funny, amen. I, this is like uh, this scripture I use on him. Uh, they come unto him as our people come. They hear thy word. They sit before him as our people. They honor him and live, but their heart is far from me. Well, that's, that's, exactly, that's exactly where we're at. I, this, they made lies of refuge under falsehood to hinder himself. Uh, Baptist bastard. I mean, we'll get we'll get to more of that in a, in a minute. But I'm just talking about where we're at in the Baptist realm, Amen. Uh, the word bastard is found three times in the Word of God. Uh, in Hebrews chapter 12, as I quoted part of it a while ago, if you be without chastisement, you're a bastard, and you'll go to hell, Amen. You can believe in all the cardinal rules of the Bible all you want to. And if you're not right with God, you'll still go to hell, like man. Just plain and simple. I'm talking about a stern warning uh, from God. In Psalms 89, verse 7, God is greatly be feared in the assembly of the saints or anywhere else as far as that goes. I'm just talking about uh, right here. There's a, a Super Bowl clip uh, after uh, Peyton Manning won the Super Bowl. This is what he said. And this was the reply. I got important things to do. Kiss my wife. Drink plenty of beer. And pray to the big man upstairs. There's no fear of God in our society. By the way, I know a lot of so-called Baptists that call themselves Christians act just like Peyton, the man upstairs. I have no respect and lost. I, I, I got more respect for a lost man than I do a so-called Christian amen. I've always liked Peyton Pan. I'm not a, a, a big uh, sports fan, but I'm just telling you, he went to school in Tennessee. Uh, he was a, a famous uh, football quarterback and stayed that way through his life, uh, career. And he, he talks about the man upstairs. And uh, this is what he said. Uh, Peyton said, I committed my life to Christ. That's my faith. I've been, that's been the most important thing to me ever since. Just like I said, when asked what he planned for after the game, Peyton answered, I want to kiss my wife and my kids. I want to hug my family. I'm going to drink a lot of Budweiser beer tonight. I promise you that. In a later interview, he added, I just quoted it a minute ago about drinking beer. Budweiser, paying them drinking beer, I guess. Ain't going to guzzle down some Budweiser. And you need to read the scripture, putting the bottle to your neighbor's mouth. Go into a minute, put the bottles in the neighbor's mouth. And no drunkard's going to be in hell. You say, it's just a moderate, uh, just in moderation, though. That, that won't work either, amen. Uh, this in Jesus Christ is uh, be addressed. The King of kings and the Lord of lords. And not the man upstairs. It, 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 it's extremely disheartened, very least, to call the maker of the universe and savior of their soul, the man upstairs. That's a lack of respect. That's no respect at all. I, uh, he's going to wake up in hell surprise if he don't get born again. That's all I can say for him. And I call this a spiritual, I don't know what denomination it is. It don't matter. He's a retard. He's a bastard as far as I'm concerned, according to the word of God. And the number one chief bastard, Billy Graham. His view on salvation, Billy Graham does not believe in hell. I think at the far that is mentioned in the Bible is a burning thirst for God. Billy sidekick, Robert Schuller, he's going on to meet his Waterloo too. And he knows all about the torments in hell. Teaches you don't 
have to know anything about Jesus to be saved. You can be in any religion in the world. We all serve the same God. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. That's what Billy Graham says up in him. Shoulder says about all of. I hadn't, uh, you talk about mixed up. Uh, I mean, the elevator don't go all the way to the top. Amen. Uh, they asked about uh, about the religion in the world, and they proclaimed the religion in the world. And Billy said, "We serve the same God." And both of them agreed that, that Allah uh, is God, and Muhammad is a prophet of God. Oh, Lord God, have mercy on our soul. John Hagee, he's not a Baptist, but he's a double married, unqualified pastor, sets dates and uh, tells us uh, Jews uh, uh, that Jesus didn't come to boom through the Messiah and they don't need Jesus. I'm, I'm talking about what's going on in our country today, amen. And I, I had a, a, a tape on the, I downloaded on the YouTube some time back and had four or five hundred thousand views on it and they finally kicked me off. Oh Todd bit me. I don't know what in the world he is, but I'm telling you how people are deceived and a lot of Baptists are no more, no less deceived than, than what he had on his uh, uh, profile, amen. And they was filled with the devil in his service. Filled with the devil, I said. And people barking like dogs, and etc. John MacArthur, five point pedigree, have this message. On heaven and hell. And you know how, how no say in the matter. You're either going to heaven or you're either hell bound. And you cannot reverse that. That's what they teach. But you don't, you don't get the Baptists to say nothing about John MacArthur. That's what my friend on the street, uh, he got tied up with John MacArthur and his doctrine. And he didn't believe the five point, uh, like John MacArthur, he said the same thing. Uh, I said, uh, I, I'm not no Calvinist, but I, I, let's believe the Bible. That's what John MacArthur said. And John MacArthur had a problem on the blood. So John MacArthur got a big problem, but the Baptist, the Baptist still loved John MacArthur. And he's preaching another gospel. And the Bible said, Many shall come in my name to see many. With things work to make merchandise out of you. Job said, Great men are not always wise. And you know, Jesus Christ, he used some uh, pretty rough words in, in his public ministry to the Pharisees. He called them hypocrites, children of hell, blind guides, fool, full of extortion, excess, white as sepulchre. Full of prophecy and iniquity and serpent generation of vipers. How can you escape the damnation of hell? That's what I'm talking about. We got problem, big problem. Jack Van Impey is another Judas Iscariot. And just like a lot of preachers today, they sold Jesus out for less than 30 pieces of silver, no doubt. Uh, he calls the Pope the Vicar of Christ. No, he's a Vicar of hell. Jack and Rex Ella Van Impey. You Catholic people, this is a, it's a talking to Catholic people now. You Catholic people, listen to your priests. Thank God for these Catholic leaders. The Catholic doctrine, right on. Jack Van Impey, according to TBN. Jack Van Impey, the Vatican doctrines are wonderfully correct. I believe in this book. Van Impey tells the TV audits. Holding up the catechism. I got one of them catechism. I know what it says. I, mean, I ain't got it down pat or nothing. But I, I've read the thing. Your Catholic doctrines are so right, he added. Who turned Jack Van Impey around to the popsy way of thinking? Why? It was Pope himself. Van Impey revealed Pope John. He has given me real directions in my life. He's a giant of the faith, said Van Impey. Please note. That it isn't Jesus Christ or his word that really motivates Van Impey. Instead, the Pope, he reports, who has given him real direction in his life. Jack Van Impey, greedy, false prophet for horror. The, uh, the church is of the devil. The Pope is a doctor of hell. I say this kindly and truthfully. Salvation is not found in any religion, but rather in a person, the Lord Jesus Christ. The Catholic Church is out of the pits of hell. Bastards. Bastard, I call him, Van Impey, Billy Graham. Billy and uh, Jack Van Impey brings uh, people together. 
Marching down the wide road to hell, no doubt. That's where they bring them together at. Money, money, more money. Judith is current. He's a, a old. I mean, they all sold their soul out for something. Paul uh, saw one time religious. I mean, he had degrees you wouldn't believe. He had credentials you wouldn't believe. And uh, he was a lost man, amen. Thought he was doing right for God. Just like I think about Demas. Demas is a forsaken man. I know a lot of Demas uh, pastors and preachers and lay members in these days. Here's another good report on Jack Hiles' outfit, Mr. Fit outfit. Stephen Anderson, out of Isles Anderson College. And he gives a sermon, it's on YouTube. Uh, it says this, a drunk. Uh, he gets saved. He tells whoever saving him, it wasn't God. Uh, he said, I'm not going to quit my drinking. And Anderson said, if this drunk died in his sin, being a drunk, he will still go to heaven. And he used the same principles on a prostitute or a whore. And she could prostitute, be a whore. And she's not going to give up her worldly life. And if she dies, she'll go to heaven. He's subverted the truth. He's telling a lie. He's a, a false Baptist vassar in cheap clothing. Amen. Listen to his little essay on how you get saved. Amen. It's on YouTube too. I'm just talking about you... When you get saved, you'll be a changed man like Apostle Paul. What I used to be, I ain't no more, amen. I used to be a blasphemer, unjust, and injurious, and all this. But after I met Christ under the master's throne, he was a changed man. What's a change about you, friend? Like I said about Kelton, William, and Steve Rogers, and Eighth Newton. And there's going to be more Baptists in hell than in heaven, friend. We have a lot of fundamental Baptist bastards building their own little kingdom. Which camp are you in in these days? Center prayer. Just like Carl Hatch. Now this is one of the greatest soul winners in history according to Jack Isles and, and toward the Lord outfit. Amen. I, I mean he a little essay, essay on how to get saved out by Bob Gray's church. You can look it up and read, read the stinking thing. It's right out of pits of hell. He's the greatest soul winner in America according to late Jack Isles. I was out in uh, Texas, Greenwood, I think, Texas, some time back, on a mission trip, me and a, a friend of mine, and they had this Gene Hired feller, Alice John Wayne, lost cursing Kathy, in a, a Baptist a missionary comfort, and using uh, John Wayne's stinking uh, words, and he sat down, had them memorized. I mean, he had them memorized, do the tea. And I'm telling you, he's he, he taking the place of the Holy Ghost drawing people, I reckon, the tactics we use. Uh, and you can get this bird uh, if you want to for several thousand dollars. He'll come to your church and uh, perform his little gig with John Wayne out there. He looks like John Wayne. He talks like John Wayne. And he'll probably go the same hell John Wayne's in. Amen. The most controversial preacher. I believe he's reached his plateau. He's got pretty rich here lately. I, in America, Phil Kidd on Unshackle. I, 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 I down this low, downloaded it on uh, YouTube here a while back. Uh, uh, number uh, 2119. Uh, wasn't the life story of Phil Kidd? And, and you listen to another message he preached in uh, 2013 or 14. Uh, bad preachers are uh, talked about uh, Ephesians chapter 6. For, for, uh, Father, provoke not your children around. And you talk about what lies he got in that. But you say, I don't bother me. He's a great man of God. I mean, he traveled the world over. I don't care what he's traveled over. You look at all these other men of God I've been preaching on and what they've done. And you can still go to hell without Christ. Amen. A changed man. I mean, building up his kingdom. Uh, why does a band describe a 60,000 Jaguar car, lives in a, a more than a modest home, and writes with a mono month blank old pen cost from fifty to eight hundred dollars and but more to the point why would any decent human being brag about when he wrecked his brand new red jaguar car hadn't had the first oil change and didn't mess his hair up didn't unbutton his shirt and and didn't sling his uh, blank old uh month blank old pen out of his pocket and but he forgot to mention in his interview on uh uh, Facebook that he had posted, amen. Uh, he forgot about his wife receiving two broke bones uh, 
uh, in their vertebrae back there in their back, amen. But that really didn't matter to him, don't get it. He just tooted his own horn. The most controversial preacher in America, Pharisee Phil Kidd, had become a prophet uh, a few weeks ago. Dr. Kidd, quote, Tonight, before service, I said, Well, people will be called to salvation. It was amazing to stand and what? Well, people, I mean, phew, they rushed the altar. I mean, they had Holy Ghost conviction and got something, amen. They, I tell you, there's no prophet since AD 96. Get this straight. Hebrew chapter 1, verse 1, 2. I could quote it, but I'm not going to. But uh, he's got two courses in psychology. Oh, Lord, I know how to jerk a tear out of his eyes. I know how to tell about the old poo-poo. I mean, my little favorite puppy dog, the one that licks me in the mouth. And eats, you know what. And uh, he got run over by a freight train the other day. And his psychology course. He said, boy, I wonder somebody killed you. I know. I wonder if he ain't beat the ace out of me. Amen. I bet he thinks about it. I've been threatened before. Amen. Ah, but I'm just telling you, why would anybody have two courses in psychology? And you know, that reminds me of Benny Chicken Hand. He had bad breath and blow down 5,000 people and get them saved. And he was hit wham, bam. Uh, I, all your disease is gone. Now sow your seed. Uh, and call this number. And, uh, and you'll receive a hundredfold blessing. I, I watched that bird here, here two or three weeks ago on TV. Boy, what blasphemy. And so many preachers are falling in the same footsteps. Uh, it's money grabbing uh, crowd. Uh, just like Phil Kidd's lost son. Uh, hey, oh, hey, whatever. He ain't no Baptist no more. He, I mean, he's raising in the Baptist. That don't prove a thing to me. Amen. And Phil Kidd, when he preached to him in 2015, uh, he said he preached a house down. At Amos uh, Church, with his ragtag band was second to none. You, uh, look, look, look up on YouTube or uh, my blog, I on Facebook, and either one, and you'll find his ragtag band is of the devil, amen. And he said his ragtag band, his band was second to none, amen. Compromising kid who curses, chatterbox at the altar call, use hell word out of context. And the F word is sure enough out of contact. And Rex is new Jaguar car and brags about his shirt and his hair and his pen and and uh, he forgot to tell you about his two big diamond ring to choke a horse and I've heard the story on that yeah I've heard a lot of his stories it's not true a lot of stuff he said hey man I followed him for 20 something years and I got tapes after tapes after tapes after tapes and CD on him don't tell me I don't know what I'm talking about you say you just trying to lamb blast the man of God I had somebody said you better not hurt God's anointed that was uh that was King David. And King David wasn't no preacher. Amen. Amen. Uh, I mean, uh, listen. Uh, he owns land in the smokers. And the world dying going to the devil's hell. And you think about it. Uh, how long would it take you to pay for some land in a little old bungalow? How long would it take you pay for that kind of land when the lost and dying world is going to hell. You know, come think about it. Uh, his, uh, Matt, his dad, he went to Philippines here two or three years ago, only about 10, 12,000 or so to the Lord. And I just asked this question, why did he stay in the Philippines? Man, when it's old and wise, they, they go for bearing precious seed, shall that was come again to rejoice and bring their sheaves with them. And, the, and when it's old and wise, he come back to the little old church up in North Carolina and he just won 10 or 12,000 people. If I got it right, I could be wrong on the exact number. I'm just telling you, why didn't he stay in the Philippines if he can win that kind of souls? Amen. What's he preaching for? Money? I don't know. I'm just telling you. This crowd uh, is moving up. Uh, I mean, now he's preaching with the big boys, even on television. Uh, I mean, the Bible talks about so many people who receive greater damnation. They run really after Urbella and will perish in the gang of Santa Corn, amen. Love money through to all evil. And filthy lure, their mouths need to be stopped. They went out from us. They had been off, no doubt, continuing with us. With fiend words, they make merchandise out of you. 
just like I said, 12 people have got something. And Hebrews 1, 1 through 3, it'll, maybe just 1, 2, it'll tell you. I mean, who's speaking to us in the last day? Try the Spirit. Many false spirits went out in the world. And buddy, he's a false spirit. You say he got well saved, so what? Do you believe he got well saved and he told it before? I don't believe the word of it. You can say what you want to. He's no prophet. He's not a son of the prophet, amen. And the canons were closed in AD 96. Now, uh, take that up and use it any way you want to. Psychology. I mean, uh, psychology works uh, works on the brain, amen, and uh, does away with the work of the Holy Spirit. And the Bible says, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. Hey, somebody said we need a great awakening. No, we need a rude awakening, amen. Rick Warren, Billy Brown, Joel Sane, Josh Myers, Kenneth Copeland, Benny, uh, Benny Hinn, Jack Hall, Jack Shout, Ronnie Sutton, Jack Van Ampey, and on and on. Just, you know, J uh, Jerry Falwell, he went down the Patriot Hill slide, and he he was in the Fundamental Baptist for a while, and he went to Southern Baptist, went down the PTO slide, and borrowed $250 uh, million dollars from uh, Sun Yun Moon, a cult leader. And you think he's right with God? I, I call these Baptist bastards, hey, amen. You call them what you want to. Uh, Bible said, be not partakers of them in sin. And who cares what the Bible said? That's right. Who cares what the Bible said anymore? You go to the camp meeting today, you get revived, you get lit up, lifted up, and uh, your spirit's revived, uh, and uh, they'll stand there and beg for money for two and a half, three hours at a time. Money, money, money on the brain. Got to have more money. I mean, we can't uh, trust God no more. He said he's plow all your riches in glory. Yeah, I never seen the righteous sake and the receipt begging bread. Billy Graham. I just call him Billy Ballum Brown. I call him number one Baptist bastard. If he don't get his act together, he'll split hell wide open with hell wide open, wide open with, with his eyes wide open. He'll split hell open with his eyes wide open. I'm talking about. The Bible said, "Have no fellowship with them. Withdraw yourself. Don't even sit at the same table with them." Be not partakers with them. The Bible said, You adulterers and adulterers, don't you that friendship with the world is the enemy of God. And the Bible said, Rebuke them all. The others may fear. I mean, Titus 2.15. These things speak and rebuke with all authority. Let no man despise thee. Just like I said about sinning. Shall we continue in sin and grace more? Lord, no. And I talked about chastisement in 1 Corinthians chapter 5. I talked about chastisement in. Uh, 2 Samuel chapter 12. I talk about chastisement uh, sometimes uh, in 1 Kings 17 about slaying a son. And Samson, uh, look at Samson's sin. He was not that God departed from uh, I wonder about Samson. You find his name over in the book of Hebrews. I wonder about him. And he laid in the devil's lap. He worked for the devil more than he worked for the Lord. Amen. I know what the story says about him, but I wonder about him anyway. Amen. Just make you realize uh, you can't go to sleep in the devil's lap and get by with it, amen. For whom the Lord loveth the chastisement and scourges. And if you're without chastisement, you'll be like Ruth and Naomi, just like Ruth uh, said, or Naomi said about, I went out full, but I come home again empty, amen. Uh, why didn't call me Naomi? Then the Lord has afflicted me. The Bible said, now the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. If it first begin there, what shall the end be them that obey not the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ? Going to hell calling Jesus Lord. Amen. I preach it known Baptist pastor. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, is going to make it, friend. Judah uh, fooled people for three and a half years. We got people uh, in the Baptist realm been fooling people all their life for preaching, amen. But I think they're preaching for the devil, amen. Uh, just like uh, we go back now, like I said, to just a minute closing, uh, Dr. Paul Kidd tries to justify liquor drinking by using Deuteronomy 14, verse 26. I'm not going to get on the scripture quote and, uh, on the whiskey drinking. And, and uh, Paul uh, Hey, he's promoting tattoos. For the record, getting a tattoo is not a sin, he said. He used Leviticus 19, verse 26 and 27. He declares how we're not under the law. And it goes on down. Uh, he talks about uh, sacrifice and this and that and the other. And, uh, and uh, listen about his tattoos. How many tattoos can you get? Can you get one, two, three, four, five? Can you get them all over your body? I mean, how many can you get? 
and uh, he's associated uh, with his Colonel Desires uh, with a non denomination group called Tribe Church. Uh, they are a modest, liberal, charismatic bunch. Paul said he doesn't know exactly what he is. Now this comes from Dennis Anderson. I use it off his essay about Paul Kidd, the phone call to Paul Kidd. Uh, he said, let's see if we can figure it out. He thinks like a charismatic. He talks like charismatic. He preaches like charismatic. He acts like charismatic. Uh, he runs with a charismatic. And you got it figured out. Yeah. Line them up with a charismatic crowd. Amen. Look the fallen excerpt about Paul getting money, money, money. He's doing pretty good this church, ain't he? And I think his, uh, God is uh, colored green. Amen. Dr. Phil Kidd in the other camp now. I've been the most controversial preacher in America to the most compromising preacher in America. Uh, Dr. Phil said his son, talk about his son, uh, Phil uh, Paul. He has dev devil worship in the church where he dresses up as Sunday. He has early Hollywood movies with four letter curse words in them. And he has wild hippie looking parties with rock band in his church early music. Uh, Paul Kidd, uh, Schwartz, wearing tattoos, drinking whiskey, and running with a, that church outfit he's running with. I'm, I'm talking about, I, I don't know why. And, and Phil Kidd may be catching up with him, amen. But I don't know why Phil Kidd would even allow him to lead in silent prayer, much less preach at his church. Just like I said, uh, Paul Kidd, this is what Phil said. He preached the house down, record-breaking crowd. The church was packed. The youth are taking over the front pews. Cars had to park down the bottom of the property. And I'll tell you what he's doing. He's getting rich. Hey, ain't no doubt about it. Uh, both wires were, how could he break on Paul Kidd's wire? I said, look it up on, but you don't care. You'd rather condemn me. I've been condemned ever since I started preaching. I'm used to that slander, amen. Look it up. See who's telling the truth. Look look at his band. And he talks about his band was second to none. It's the second to none out of pits of hell, amen. Paul Kidd is adamant about his liberal stand. And perverse his scriptures endure Colonel Desire. And doctor, he associated with that, that church up there in North Carolina. I just, uh, just like I said, they're a bunch of charismatic, amen. Now you know why there's no revival in the land. Instead of growing churches each day, I think they're swelling. And Apostle Paul would say, Am I therefore become your end because I tell you the truth? Hey, you can fall into the far wagon to hell if you want to. And now we're seeing where the church is going. Car wars, swim parties, rummage sale, four-letter curse words, movies ungodly in the church, egg hunt, Easter egg hunt, and teaching about the Easter money hopping down the aisle, amen. Also, wrong, rock music, and his women, his woman, rather. I mean, a song leader wearing the men's breeches, and they wear their hats, the drummer, and Paul does it too. I mean, to have a hat on the house of God, and the drummer had his lid on backwards on his head while, uh, I mean, beating on his drums. I wish I could think something good to say about the liberal kid family. And, uh, by the way, I got a picture I put on there down there. Uh, Paul holding up a hooter girl, half-naked hooter girl out in Las Vegas. See, what said in uh, goes to Vegas don't stay in Vegas. Even Paul himself, I don't know why the poor old uh, deluded uh, uh, lost uh, feller sent me an email, that uh, woman in his arms, amen. And his dad, boy, he sure done, raise, uh, done a lot of good raising his uh, family, just like his dad. I mean, he never did talk back first time to his dad. And his dad said one day when he in the uh, dope dealing business, and they shot in his house, and his dad took uh, Phil aside and said, Here, son, take my 32 pistol and put it under your clothes here and be cool, man. You shoot them before she they shoot you. Well, mark them. Which called division contrary. I, I I hope you listen to this whole message. Maybe you get something out of it. I enjoyed preaching it anyway. And may God reach way down and save that soul in your hell. Because this world's on the downhill course.
to the pits of hell. And so many Baptists, fundamental so-called Baptists, like I pointed out, Jack Howell Misfit Outfit, are on that broad road, and a lot of people are following them. And like I said, this may be the beginning of the end, and it's going to get worse before it gets better. I look for rights in Cleveland uh, come this uh, uh, July, I guess. Ain't no telling what's going to happen to us. And the only thing I can tell you and tell you lost church folks, you need to repent of your sins, cry out to the Lord, grace and mercy, and get born in the family of God, and get saved by the good grace of God. May God richly bless you. Save that soul nearest death. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.